Ohio, is it a lean or a deed? You might not have given Ohio much thought, but I think you need to reconsider. Okay, Ohio is what we call a dual state. This means double the opportunity, and I'm gonna show you how to take advantage of that in this video. Now, there's so many good things happening in Ohio, there's gonna be a two-part series. Uno, dos, one, two, first and second. So that always comes in that order. This is gonna be kind of like a Star Wars episode, only we're not gonna have six, we're only gonna have two, okay? It's got so much packed into it. I'll show you how to get the property right away. There's so many things going on, so make sure you watch all of it, because combined, it's gonna make your bank account explode. Dual state, as I've mentioned in other videos. Dual state means you can do both tax liens and tax deeds. It's the county's preference. So let's just go through the facts of Ohio so we can establish where we're going with this. In video number uno, number one, we're gonna focus on the tax lien side of things. I think it's appropriate. It becomes a tax lien before it becomes a tax deed. So this will be the first process of what will happen. Now tax lien auctions are held at various times depending on the county and their choice. How they conduct the sale is also dependent on them. Make sure you check the county's website. I've taught you that in other videos. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and you can get access to all those videos. And if, again, this is a long two-part series. Okay, well, I guess it's not that long. We're, we're not gonna find out who killed the Death Star or anything like that. But if you have questions, just type them inside the, the, the comments in there. I'll make sure I get those. Now the bidding process in Ohio starts at 18% and you bid down the interest rate. So it potentially can be bid down to zero. So you need to know what you're bidding on. Now this is really interesting. First of all, some counties, one of the only states that allows this, some counties in Ohio will bundle the tax lien certificates, which is not my favorite thing, but they can do it in Ohio. Again, dealer's choice as they say in Nevada, right? In other words, what they do is they'll say, hey, we've got $4 million in liens here. We're going to offer all of these. Okay, and I've only seen that go down a couple of times, but be aware that that can happen. Now, here's another caveat in Ohio. If a lien does not sell at the sale, it does not go into inventory. Uh, uh, uh. It'll literally be offered next year at the next auction. And it's really kind of strange because for years, I've always thought that seems like the natural process, but it wasn't. So in the very beginning, when I'm like, what happens to these liens that didn't sell? You mean I can buy them next week type of deal? You know, it was a huge money-making opportunity. That is not available in Ohio. Now, this is a fact that a lot of people aren't aware of with Ohio. It's the seventh largest populous state in the country. It's got low cost of living. There's access to like anywhere around. There's a lot of coming. As a matter of fact, Right now, at the time of this video, Indiana and Ohio are booming right now because you've got all these Gen Xers out there that are looking at California and Florida. And tell you, what the heck? How much money is this place? Like places like Utah used to be affordable. And they said, I can't even afford to get started here. And Ohio has a good option, although you need to bring a jacket. So one of the benefits about starting in Ohio for you beginning investors is low price point. Okay, so if you've got property values that are average $260,000, your entry point to buy a tax lien certificate is gonna be substantially less. And you wanna think about that when researching the markets. Now, you've seen in my other videos, so let's just recap, okay? I always say pick six deed states and six lien states, and then three counties in each one of those states, which would give you 36 counties coming at you with inventory. Ohio might be on that list, you know, for no other reason than this. Hey, I can get started. And I had somebody say to me, well, why would I want to buy a lien for $150? Because it's paying 18%. I mean, what else are you going to do with your money? You leave it in the bank right now? Oh yeah, they're going to pay you a whopping 2%, but it's insured by the FDIC. Wait a second. I can buy a $150 lien on a property that's paying 18%. If they fail to pay that, I get a property free and clear. Always remember about that safety. One of the things I talk to about high dollar investors is this. One of the things is that, oh, I want to buy this house. I'm going to make $300,000 on this deal. I want to sell that. I go, whoa, whoa, wait a second. Why don't we hold that and rent it out? Because if you sell that property, you're going to have to take $300,000 in profit and whatever cost you've got in that and find something else to invest in. Believe it or not, one of the hardest things 
as an investor is to finding a safe and reliable place to park your money. So this might be a reason why you want to start off with Ohio. Okay, I've had students in the past that have bought liens in states like Ohio for less than $500, ended up with the property and made multi-thousand dollars of property. One, I'm thinking of particular, they paid like $1,400. It did not redeem and they ended up with a $54,000 property in their private retirement account. So you know what their tax basis on that was? Zero. Is that a good number when you're dealing with the IRS? Absolutely. So now the Wright brothers, being from Ohio, but flying for the first time on the beaches in North Carolina, okay, there's a lot more that happens in Ohio there. First, it's a great place to get started. Not only should you think about these high grade interest rates and the underlying value of the properties, but maybe for you new investors out there say, hey, I can't afford multi-thousand dollar tax lien certificates. Now here's another thing. If it's low cost at a single family residential, it's even lower on land. The other thing I like about Ohio, you got Cleveland, Cincinnati, what have you. What I found driving around there looking at other deals, because I've done deals in Cincinnati, is there's these really old mature neighborhoods that in those neighborhoods, all of a sudden there's a fully improved lot. I'm like, okay, wait a second. This neighborhood is like 70 years old, very well established, beautiful trees in there. And there's a lot. And a, a little research, you, can, you don't need to talk to the neighbors, but I always love doing that. And, oh yeah, so-and-so bought that property so they would have a big yard for their house. They since died, that house was sold. This one just sat there, nobody paid the taxes on it. We don't really know what to do to the property because they don't understand about tax lien certificates or tax deeds. So I've bought lots for literally a few hundred dollars, turned around, called the neighbor and said, hey, I own the lot next to you, would you want to buy it? And not all the time, but you know what? All they have to do is say yes. I had a judge um, call me one time. This was in um, Lake of the Ozarks, okay? And so the guy calls me in Missouri and he calls me up and he says, uh, I, I, I want to buy the lot next to me. You own it. I know you got it at a tax deed sale. So um, just bear with me on how I'm going to pay for it. I said, I don't know what that has to do with it. His name is John. And he goes, well, here's the deal. My daughter owns a lot on the other side of the house, on the other side of it. We own it here. We'd like to buy that so nobody builds before it. Our dogs can run out there. I said, make me an offer. So he offers me $3,500. He owns the property. I said, handle the paperwork and you're good to go. I pay $500 for the lot. Okay, so don't discount that. There's a lot of value. In it. So when you see markets like Ohio or Indiana or Illinois, or some of the, or Wyoming. I mean, all these places though that, that people are like, ah, you know, I want to knock it out of the park. Don't forget about getting the first down. You don't need to go for the end zone every time. Just move the ball down the field. It's key. If you're trying to throw that ball in the end zone every time, you're gonna lose the game. Ask Tom Brady, he's a professional at it. And here's the cool thing. For if you're a new investor or you're a seasoned investor, I've got a brand new train that'll walk you step by step on every pitfall that you can think of and the right way to make, make money right away, okay? I've just put it together. If you want access to that for free, I'll give it to you. All you have to do is go to my link. It's Higgins, H-I-G-G-I-N-S, method.com. That's HigginsMethod.com. Click on that and I got free training for you to your heart's delight. Good luck and be careful out there.